you think that ISIS militants are confined to the Middle East. However, the Philippines special forces are dealing with them. Let's go. Boss, last man. Follow him, follow him. Run, run, run. It looks like the Battle of Way City in the Vietnam War. The place has been wrecked. I know that the Philippine government was bombing different locations where they knew ISIS was located. This is the special forces sent in trying to take them out. I did another video on this, of course, immediately demonetized. However, the topic is interesting because it's an urban, war, it's an urban landscape where people have had to evacuate effectively because of all the fighting. These are the Philippines Special Forces on the hunt for ISIS militants. Just taking cover here because the cyber's all around us if it's even getting to the. Now, how do you tell the friend from the foe in this? You know, these guys clearly have uniforms on, but if you're a local, Drop your weapon. How can you tell the ISIS militants from the locals? I don't know if they've told everybody clear out. Anybody left's a bad guy. But in the other video, look in the description. There were still people living there. There weren't ISIS militants, and they were all commingled. And it was just like in the Middle East. It was hard to figure out who was the good guy, who was the bad guy. Positions they need to be in this challenge. More accustomed to jungle fighting than urban warfare, battling in these tight alleyways is proving harder than expected. Fuck. These buildings were previously occupied by the terrorists. Are they still here? Both were shooting at us. Where are their snipers? Yeah, the big buildings over there. How close? 200 to 250 meters. I'm preparing to attack. We have one pilot position there, uh -huh. taking fire. And the people who are here are locals, so they know the area. These special forces come in, they probably don't know the area. They train in urban combat, in urban training centers. This is completely foreign to them, so they're out of their territory, where you've got people who live there. Some have probably been their entire life, got converted to the religion of peace, and here we go. Enemy snipers across the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have another one inside here. Can you see the enemy snipers from here? Yeah. From our scopes, yes. Okay. We can see their muzzle flashes right now. Thanks. Under the table, under the table. Yeah. Ready. Fire. You will notice when you see a lot of movies, to include American Sniper, you often see their muzzle either sticking out of a structure or clearly visible from their firing position. This is the way you'd expect. They're sitting back. You can't see their firing position. You know, they're sitting by three meters off of the window. But you'd expect, you know, a lot of these movies, they've got it so wonky that as soon as you fire, they know exactly where you were and give up your position. They have to leave this area. Okay. We just shot fired, so we expect a counter counter attack to us, okay? Okay. You know, the difference with these guys, say, compared to American forces or allies, they're not calling a helicopter, they're not calling it an airstrike, they don't have drones, this is probably like house to house, building to building, and tough sledding from the looks of it. With the enemy now firing back, the unit is taking cover in this classroom until the escape route is clear. Wow. Wow. So crazy to see that this was a active school just a couple of weeks ago and now swamp to smithereens.
Now look at the devastation, right? Active school a few weeks ago, she says. ISIS comes in, disrupts everything. The place is a disaster. Now, I know part of it was from the Philippine government trying to bomb ISIS out of the locations. You can hear conflicting reports. But ultimately, if ISIS wasn't there, would you have this problem? I think the answer is no. Is this the toughest war you've been in? Sure. Why? They're not, they're not running out of ammo. They can leave behind IEDs while they're pursuing them. Mm -hmm. Two IEDs laid here by the terrorists, because this used to be a terrorist stronghold. Mm -hmm. We push them back the river. But if you can see, you got to ask yourself, who's funding this, right? You want to cut the head off the beast, you cut out the money source. Well, we know who's funding it. How are they getting the information for them to build IEDs, the training element? How's all this happening? Because you want to avoid it whatever country you're in. Here in the States, we try to keep track of cells. There's always a new extremist group they're looking at. Because when you see this happening, how devastating it is. They're in that school where kids used to come and learn their mathematics and ar arithmetic and everything else. They're gone, displaced. They don't have a FEMA. They don't have the same resources that we have. So it's terrible. The maze of small alleys. The streets are the killing zones. This is Marawi. For weeks, the Philippines military, assisted by U.S. Special Forces, has been pounding the city with airstrikes and battling house to house in an effort to root out this man. Isnilon Hapilon, the leader of homegrown terror group Abu Sayyaf. So there we go, like I said, homegrown terror group. So they didn't come from somewhere else. You know, somebody must have came to him, given him money, got him into the ideology. Won't even say what religion. But I don't think it's a religious thing. I think it's really a monetary control thing. Because these people, you know, they're in a poor community. I'm guessing. You give them some money, give them a cause, give them some hope. I just can't figure out why else they'd be doing this. Now, I do have quite a few viewers in the Philippines. I'd love to hear your opinion. Put it in the comments if you would. Maybe check out my website and go to the email link and. You can contact me that way so we can discuss it openly. They pledged allegiance to ISIS in 2014. <laughs> Philippine authorities say Hapilon, along with another ISIS-linked militant group called Maute, were planning to establish Southeast Asia's first Islamic State Caliphate here in Marawi, a predominantly Muslim city in a country that's more than 90% Christian. With an extensive network of hundreds of fighters, both local and foreign, these militants have mastered the terrain and stashed away a seemingly endless supply of weapons. So what if they did take the area? Let's just go through it. They go there in a country that's 90% Christian. This area has a larger Muslim population. What if it was just a Muslim country or area, we'll call it? How would that be different? What do these people really want? Like, what if they got what they wanted? Do they want all of us to change? What are they looking for? You got to ask yourself the question, okay, here's what you want. Here's your city. Then what? I don't know that it ever stops with these type of extremists. We're heading right into Marawi City right now towards the heart of the battle. Right into Marawi City right now towards the heart of the battle. Hear this continuing barrage of airstrikes going off all day long. The only functioning building in this part of town is the tactical command post of one Marine Battalion, the main forward operating base for the armed forces. We're being fired at? Yes. From where? From that position. Yeah, From that position? Side. Yes. Okay. So we should keep a low profile. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have they managed to fire in here into the base before? This is still a hot zone. Major Rowan Remus is one of the commanding officers who's been stationed here since the fighting began. Fighting, fighting! Can you just show us where the enemy is? Okay, this is, this is Mapandi Bridge. Before, this was well defended. 
So um, they place car bombs, roadblocks, and they employ the sniper fires. So this. I mean, look at what these people have done. They take over an area. Government comes in. Saw some air strikes. It's just the whole place is devastated. It'll never be the same in most of these people's lifetime. He is essentially divided by this river going yes. through. Okay. So the enemy is contained within this area on the other side of the bridge? Other side of the bridge. Okay. Now the target of our maneuvering elements is to neutralize those uh, vantage positions through our mortar fire. Oh, sounds close. Pounding the city with airstrikes, and they're just about to send this mortar into enemy territory. Lord. I don't know they can have a real good target on the enemy. I mean, they're dropping bombs on buildings, calling in coordinates and saying, hit this building, building 27. It seems like it's spray and pray, and it's been going on a long time. Just got to wonder how these people. The bad guys keep funding this operation, getting intel, making this thing go. End of mission, sir. Over. Just hours after we left this base, these Marines were ambushed during an operation. 13 were killed and at least 40 wounded in what wow. was the bloodiest day for the armed forces since the battle began. They either are in their rescue. But it's not just militants inside the city. There are also hundreds of civilians. We managed to get the number of one man who's trapped in the heart of the siege. So there's hundreds of people left in the city. It's probably some people who don't want to leave. I remember watching one of these, and there was an old lady who didn't want to leave. She'd been there her entire life. And you got, I guess we can call this a civil war. It's not like when we went to the Middle East or somewhat foreigners coming to their territory. These are people that, brothers they could be. I don't know how else to describe this. It's sickening. We're running out of food, and we have uh, two child here, and undergoing trauma. Do you have a plan to escape? We don't have concrete gun man because we don't know which is the basis of uh, I see. so we have to stay put and wait for the rescue. Are you safe right now? I don't know why, but uh, the, I think the authorities are for the rescue team. Please, 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 let's help them. Thank you. Okay. Who Hard to imagine this sitting here in the United States, that a city that was functioning, bustling with commerce, all of a sudden is taken over, war-torn city. And it's something that came from thousands of miles away in the Middle East. You know, ISIS is somewhat of a new term for the same group that's been around a long time. They really come to power, and you wonder, how do you stop it? The people there that really latch onto it, is it a resource issue at the location, or would money solve it? Which generally it doesn't. There's some other problem. You hung up. For the people trapped inside Marawi, the army is not moving fast enough, and the wow. situation is becoming more desperate by the day. So is everything going to plan from your yes, side? Yes, uh, we are doing very well, okay. Colonel um, Jua Herrera is the spokesperson for Joint Task Force Marawi. Barrett is a 50 caliber. Uh -huh. Despite the military's many setbacks, he's keen to show us that the armed forces have retrieved around 120 high-powered weapons from the enemy. I mean, obviously the insurgents were pretty well equipped. You look at the weapons, they're all US-made weapons. <laughs> You wonder how they get there, right? Not like the Philippine government or in the Philippines, you go down the street and buy a Barrett 50 cal. Somehow they're getting smuggled in, getting used. I'm sure you could trace those back to some U.S. weapons from the Middle East that ended up there. What a mess. Well equipped uh, your troops. Well, uh, our armed forces are well educated, highly trained. We are very capable to address uh, terrorism. So obviously there's also a lot of criticisms towards the armed forces suggesting that you're not well equipped and that you're not doing a 
great job, quite frankly, at pushing back these militants. Well, uh, I, I can say I don't think I've seen a news organization in the last 20 years ever compliment what the military is doing. First comes out, you're not well equipped, you're not doing a good job. You know, got to define what a good job is. She understands by looking what's been going on there. This is a lot of heavy lifting. It's not going to be like you go in an afternoon and it's over. That, that, that's their opinion, okay? How long do you think it's going to be before? Well, we don't want to give timeline because we, we need to put premium on the lives of the people that were trapped in that conflict right. area. Right. Obviously, time is running out for them. I mean, they've been stuck yes, in Yes, but uh, we're, we're doing our best. Now, as the military ramps up pressure on the remaining terrorist strongholds, a humanitarian crisis looms. And concerns that Marawi is only the beginning of an increasingly violent ISIS presence are rapidly spreading throughout the region. What is the solution to stop this rapidly spreading ISIS? Could change into another name tomorrow, but the rapidly spreading extremism.